Hello everyone, Happy New Year. Uh, welcome back to the channel and the first video of 2021. Hope you all had a great Christmas. Um, in this video, I'd like to introduce lenses to those of you that are new to photography or perhaps even have been into it for a while, but are still really mystified about the wonderful world of lenses. After all, they are arguably the most important part of any photographic project. Um, get your lens right and a lot of things will fall into place. Have a bad lens and it doesn't matter how much you compensate, uh, things can be ruined. A um, little bit of a disclaimer though, um, there is quite a lot of um, anomalies within lenses, quite a lot of exceptions to the things I'm about to say. So please don't jump down my throat in the comments um, with, uh, oh, what about if? I'm gonna try and keep it simple for the beginner if we can. Let's have a look. So here we have uh, two examples, uh, two very different examples of camera lenses. Um, this one's obviously very small, this one's very big. Um, this one uh, is pretty limited in uh, its capabilities, this one's a little bit more versatile. But the overall principle is exactly the same between them, and in fact all lenses, whether it be for film cameras, digital cameras, you know, video cameras, even telescopes and microscopes, the principle is the same, although obviously the construction and the features, if you like, um, design-wise are, are very different or can be very different. When we talk about lenses for cameras, um, there are many, many different types that have many, many different jobs. Um, so here we have a, a fixed lens, um, very little adjustment to it. Here we have a zoom lens, which we can adjust um, you know, uh, its focal length, which I'll talk more about in a moment. Um, but there are many more types of lenses than that. Um, tilt shift, um, stereoscopic lenses, um, infrared, ultraviolet, fisheye lenses. There's, there's many different types. I'm just going to keep it simple and just talk about both the fixed and the uh, variable length for, for the purposes of this video. To illustrate another uh, facet of lenses, I've got two other cameras here. Uh, on the Helena 3000, a couple of things about it. This is um, fixed to the camera, I can't change it. All right, this camera came with this lens and that's all uh, I can use. And in fact, when we take the picture, uh, we're looking through this viewfinder here rather than actually through the lens itself. Um, on the Centon here, which I've featured in a, a recent video, um, this is uh, SLR, single lens reflex. So basically no viewfinder. We're looking through the lens when we actually take the photo, but also it can be changed um, by way of a lens mounting, which I'll talk about. I can take this off and replace it with another type of uh, compatible lens. So here I have a typical SLR lens um, and Quite often when people are looking to buy lenses um, or looking to sell them or looking to describe them, they'll use uh, two descriptors. The first one is the focal length of the lens. And what we mean by this is the distance from this glass here back to this glass here. And in the case of this camera, you can see uh, it's 50 millimeters. So this is a 50 millimeter lens. It's what often is referred to as a prime lens. In other words, it's fixed at 50. You can't change it. I'll explain what focal length actually means in terms of you taking a picture shortly, but um, it's a 50 millimeter lens. The other thing to notice is how wide the aperture goes. Um, you'll see here my aperture ring. If I turn that, hopefully, let me get to catch the light, there we go. Turn that, you'll see the aperture opening and closing. On its widest aperture, or in other words, the smallest f-stop, uh, you can see here uh, is 1.7. And again, it's, it's written here as well. So this is a 50 millimeter f1.7 lens. 1.7 is relatively wide. There's not uh, too many lenses that are wider than that. Most lenses you'll see around the f3.5. Um, f2.8 that kind of thing they're kind of the sort of common sizes but if I take for instance let me just grab uh, a bigger lens here so as I've already described I don't know whether you're going to better see this on the camera it's rather filthy this one because I've only just bought it 
Uh, so you can see here um, that this is a uh, 200 millimeter lens if you can make that out. So the distance between here and here is 200. It's actually not at the moment because this is not a prime lens, this is a zoom lens. So you'll see I can actually lengthen it. So it was actually um, down to 28 millimeters up to 200. So this is often referred to um, obviously the zoom lens but by its range so rather than being a 200 millimeter lens it's actually a 28 to 200 millimeter which is written down here um, and it's uh, f 3.8 double check that because my eyesight's not the best yeah f 3.8 um, so yeah they're the two descriptors the focal length and the widest aperture in terms of its f so let's have a look at focal length in a bit more detail so I've got a zoom lens here. Um, we can see that it's uh, 75 millimeter to 150 millimeter focal length. And we adjust it by sliding this collar backwards and forwards. So we know it's a zoom lens and not uh, a prime lens. The job of any lens is basically uh, a means of bringing light into a fixed focal point. So in a film camera, um, the lens basically is designed to uh, let the light hit the film strip, obviously situated somewhere in the camera back here. Um, if it were a digital camera, obviously it would be the sensor that uh, we're directing light to. But where it actually hits, that's what we class as the focal point, a fixed focal point. You may have noticed on some cameras this little symbol here, and this is indicating where the focal plane is, in other words, where the uh, film is actually sitting. So the focal length of the lens really should include the distance from the back of the lens to this symbol, if that makes sense. Why is this important? Well, basically, uh, it determines how much you'll be able to see uh, in your picture. Um, the longer the focal length, uh, the closer things will appear to be, but the actual field of view will be narrower and you won't be able to get as much into your shot. Um, shorter focal length, uh, okay, things might appear further away, but a much wider angle, uh, a much wider field of view and therefore much more in the shot. So obviously you choose your lens carefully depending on what you're attempting to photograph. And the flexibility of zoom lenses allows you to adjust that, whereas a prime lens um, you know, is, is uh, obviously less flexible, but then it's quicker to use and that sort of thing. So the other thing that uh, I mentioned then is the aperture. In other words, how much light we're letting in uh, based on uh, an aperture ring, um, which often range, I mean, this one's a bit unusual. It actually goes um, from F32 to F4. Um, the lower the number, the wider the aperture and therefore the more light we're letting in. Um, so F32 actually is, is a very narrow um, aperture. Um, and you might think to yourself, well, okay, surely the more light, the better. Um, but it has another effect um, on the uh, photograph that comes out, and that's what we call depth of field, which I'll explain in a moment. This one that I showed you earlier runs from f1.7 to f16, um, which is probably um, you know an ideal range, really, that will cover a lot of options. And as a prime lens, that's kind of what you want, really. Generally speaking, the wider the aperture that's available on the lens, the more expensive the lens will be. Um, partly because of quality, it means that the manufacturer has overcome the limitations that are in every lens, um, or somewhat overcome them anyway. Um, but uh, also the uh, effect if you like that uh, a wider aperture gives to photography is kind of in vogue um, there's a phrase you may have come across called bokeh 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 or however you want to pronounce it i've heard it called all sorts um, basically of um, your pin sharp focus on your subject matter but that everything else is out of focus and it's you know it is a desirable look especially in portrait photography you want the viewer's attention drawn to um, the eyes of the portrait of the person whose portrait you're taking and so a blurred background uh, is very uh, desirable and you're going to achieve that with uh, as lower uh, F number or as wider aperture as you uh, possibly can go. Um, and this is all partly what we refer to as depth of field. So let's explore depth of field in more detail. 
Okay, so here I have two uh, post-it notes set up. A uh, little smiley face here is to represent, let's say I'm taking someone's portrait. Um, excuse my artistic skills, but the mountains on the far one are to represent a landscape picture. So I've taken a photograph here, first of all, um, of what you could class as a portrait, <laughs> um, because uh, I've set the aperture to the widest uh, that I could in the light that I had available, which was f1.6, which is actually um, quite a, a wide aperture. Uh, but you'll notice it's just the face that's in focus, really. Anything that is even just slightly behind the face uh, is out of focus. So certainly the mountains are on my other post-it note, the uh, mess of my printer, uh, the cameras in my cabinet, um, they're all blurred and out of focus. And that's what you'd expect. And it's actually quite a desirable effect if you are trying to um, you know, take a portrait. People actually like that, um, that look of face in sharp and the background in blur because it draws attention to the face and that's what you're trying to do with uh, portrait photography. The second um, image I've taken now, I've increased the aperture. I wasn't able to, um, I say I increased, what I've actually done is increased the number. Uh, it's now f11, uh, but what that's actually done is close down the aperture so you can see it's a darker image um, because less light is coming into the camera. However, much more is in focus now. I could have forced this uh, and gone even narrower, say f22, um, probably would have got everything in focus uh, nice and sharp, but you can see certainly the face is still relatively in focus and so is everything in the background. And this is what we refer to as depth of field. This is a wide depth of field. Previous photograph is a narrow depth of field. And then the final aspect of uh, lenses then is the mounting, how they actually attach to the camera, if indeed they're the type that can be removed. Um, I featured this camera in a previous video. So this has um, a common mount uh, M42. It's a screw mount. Basically the lens is just on a thread and it uh, unscrews. Whereas this one here is what's known, <coughs> what's known as a bayonet mount. So I press a button to release and then it's just one twist and it comes off. So whilst you could say that the screw mount and the beta mount are the two uh, main types, there's many sort of subcategories if you like. Um, Pentax K, OM mount, um, the Nikon mount, there are, there are so many. And even within those then, um, you've got, um, so this is a Pentax K bayonet fitting, uh, but this is what's often known as the KM because it's the manual version, whereas this one here, same fitting, Pentax K, but this is the automatic one, uh, or sometimes called KA. You'll notice it's got little contacts across here, and that's where the camera and the lens can communicate and offer auto exposure settings. Um, they'll both work on any, on any K fitting camera, um, however, as I say, you'll only get the automatic features if the camera supports it. Um, what it boils down to basically is that the um, manufacturers have their own types so um, it's a little like sort of charging leads for phone you're gonna have to make sure that um, if you're after a lens that obviously it's gonna have the right type to fit your right kind of mount to fit your camera and also of course when you're looking for cameras that you know and you've got some existing lenses that they're going to fit um, some smart people can just look at a, a mounting and actually tell you what it is i haven't quite got to that stage yet but of experience i suppose but you know worst case scenario is you just have a look and actually you know take your camera shopping with you and just have a try and see if it fits um, there are quite a few guides out there um, on the internet so i'm sure if you search you'll, you'll find out um, you know, firstly, if you're looking for a particular camera, what type of mounting it supports, or if you're looking at a certain lens, um, what type of mounting is on it. So, hope you enjoyed the video. As I say, many more different types of lenses, many more different types of mountings, and uh, you know, uh, there are some exceptions to the, the rules that I've given you, as I say, but hopefully this forms a bit of an introduction into the world of lenses for you. Um, if it proves popular, maybe I can make a, a, a part two at some point in the future. Thank you all again for watching. I really, really do appreciate every single view, like, um, share, whatever, uh, comment. Um, nearly at 100 subscribers as I record this. I think I'm at 95, so there's five to go for the 100 that I was uh, aiming for for the end of 2020. Um, but yeah, hopefully 2021 and the, the uh, channel will take off a bit. Um, all that remains to me to say is uh, thank you very much, Happy New Year, and I'll see you next time.
tasty.